This is the perfect example of what not to do after your parole board hearing. I can't hear nothing you're saying. I can't hear you. Man, fuck y'all crockers, man. Would you introduce yourself, Mr. Horton? Tell us your name and your DMC number, please. My name is Michael Horton, uh, 484353. Mr. Harton, my name is Cheryl Renanza. This is Mr. Roche and Mr. Freeman seated with me this morning. We are your panel today. Uh, we're here for a revocation decision. And I think in front of you, sir, do you have a parole revocation questionnaire? Yes, there? ma'am. That's your signature at the bottom of that page, dated December 5th, 2023. Yes, ma'am. Based on that information, sir, you're not eligible for appointed counsel. So are you ready to proceed this morning with your revocation decision? Yes. All right. So I'll read the allegation against you, after which you'll enter a plea guilty or not guilty to violate the, the condition. And then we'll talk about it. So you're accused of violating condition number four. And it says on April 22nd, 2023, you were arrested by Shreveport police for committing the misdemeanor offense of battery of a dating partner. On November 13th, 2023, you pled guilty to the amended charge of disturbing the peace. So how do you plead to violating condition number four? Not guilty. Tell us what happened. Yeah, on that date, um, the victim came over there, the alleged victim came over there to my uh, house and uh, she started a commotion. And then, uh, because she thought I was, she thought I was um, talking to the other woman that was there because there was a lot of friends and family there. And they ended up getting into it, having words, and they exchanged blows. And next thing you know, everybody stopped, everybody stopped them from fighting. Next thing you know, about two hours later, the police came and they asked, who was Michael Horton? And I said, it's me. Next thing you know, they asked what happened and um, a couple of people told them what happened. Next thing you know, the police said if they found out that they lying for me, that they were going to uh, take them to jail. Next thing you know, an argument got, an argument came between the police officer and my witnesses because they threatened my witnesses. Next thing you know, they went ahead and locked me up and charged me with um, domestic dispute. But they came back like an hour later and charged me with battery of a dating partner because they said the girl was lying about being pregnant to enhance my charges. So I bonded out, told my parole officer what happened and everything. And she just told me, uh, tell her what the outcome I'm going to be. Uh, of the situation. So October, about October the 5th or something like that, I missed my court date and they put a warrant out for me and I went and turned myself in because I missed the court date and I've been fighting it ever since. Um, yeah, but you pled guilty in court to disturbing the peace, did you not? Yes, ma'am, because I, up under my discretion, my parole officer said my charge get dismissed or they drop it down that to a lower charge that she'll, she'll, um, lift the hole, but I ain't then ain't nothing ever to proceed. So I, I copped out to the charges just so that I can come home. So the victim in this case, weren't you were y'all in the car? No ma'am. We was on Jackson. On Jackson Street. Ain't nothing that never occurred. And her Miss Scott is the victim's name. Yes, ma'am. We were never in no car. All this happened on all this happened outside. Mm -hmm. And Whitney Boykin, she witnessed, says she saw you punch uh, Miss Scott in the face several times. They won't even said that. I don't even know who that is. Like, I never seen my motions or number that. Like, that's why I was going to court every day so that I can see my alleged or guess cross examine my witness because that never happened. I, so I, I don't understand what you say happened. Tell us what you say happened. I just told you when when she came over there, she thought me. Where were you? On Jackson Street, thirty-five. 
like 35 something Jackson Street. I just know we was at a whose house were you at? My friend Ralph. All right, what happened? She came over there and she thought that I was talking to the other girl, Lisa, and none of this stuff never occurred. So they got into it and they had some words in this thing, you know, a fight broke out. Ma'am? Lisa and Miss Scott got into it, you say? Yes, ma'am. And we broke the fight up. Like, and then about an hour or two later, the laws came. And, and, and uh, who is we? You said we broke the fight up. Who did it? Ma'am? Who broke the fight up? I did, and um, Ralph broke the fight up. Like, it was a lot of people over there. It was like a get-together. What's your relationship now with Miss Scott? Now? I don't talk yeah. to her. Like, after that, after I told my probation officer what happened, and she told me to cut ties with her, that's what I did. Like, I ain't, I never talked to her after that or uh, to this day. But you been in jail? No, I, I was out there. I burned it out that same day. Okay, I get it. I say, I understand. I burned it out. I stayed on the street for six months. And then when I was going to court, I missed my court date. Right. And the next day, I thought it was on the 5th, but it was on the 4th. So when I did go on the 5th, uh, he told me that I had a uh, warrant out for my arrest. So, so I turned myself in. All right. Is there anything else you want to see? Y'all have any questions? <laughs> yes, I have one question. What's your heart? Good morning. Yes, sir. Morning. You said you broke up a fight between your girlfriend, Miss Scott, and another young lady. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the fight was over with, and two hours later, the police came and asked for Michael Hart. Yes, sir. So I wonder why they would ask for you. Because I guess she, I guess she says that I did something to her, like, and when I told them everything, like I had witness there and everything, like. But we have a witness say that this Walker said that you punched her in her face. But that never occurred. Like it never did occur. Like. Okay. Thank you. Is there a statement you'd like to make? Like that's why, like not too long ago, like her brothers and her other sister even um, put a bubble on the what you call it, just so that, you know, uh, cause they ain't know that I was in jail all this time. They thought I just left or whatever. And they wrote a statement for me and everything. My sister posted something to you. Like I never did none of that stuff. Like I never, like that never, that never occurred. Like that's why I was going to court to fight these charges. But then you pled guilty to disturbing the peace. Yes, you because should. I got stuff like I got jobs out there, I got kids out yeah. there. Like, come on, like I even right. told my lawyer. The commander, is there anything you you want to add, important? Yes, ma'am. He was booked in and, and transferred here on October thirteenth. 2023. Uh, he had a write up for refusal to go to his sale when told to on October 19th, 2023. And he had another write up on October the 23rd, 2023, for refusal to go to his sale when told to. Thank you, sir. Martin, anything else? Man, I just had one write up because I just got out the shower. All right, Mr. Hart, I think we're ready to go. <laughs> I'll be the first part of my today's going to be revoked to revoke parole. You might, Mr. Rush. Mr. Hart. Yes, sir. I found a guilty of violating the number four. I can't hear nothing you're saying. I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. You hear me now? Yes. Mr. Hart, I found you guilty. I violated condition number four of your parole supervision contract involved in criminal activity. Therefore, I'm revoking your supervision. Mr. Frank. I'm also finding guilty of uh, 
violating conditions of his. Uh, and fuck y'all, crackers, uh, man. I guess it's safe to say that in the next two years when he's eligible for parole, it's going to be denied.